In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, a big feast we are celebrating today, not only we here locally, but the entire Orthodox world, from US, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, and in all the parts of the world. And this gospel that we just heard, we can talk literally, not days, but weeks and months. It's so full with messages, prophecies. It's so consistent. <clears throat> and we are seeing, firstly, six days before the Passover. As after he roused his friend Lazarus from the dead, they offered to him a supper, a dinner. And Jesus was invited to the dinner with his disciples and Lazarus. And not only there were Lazarus' sisters, Martha, which was serving as well always, and Mary washing Jesus' feet with her tears when, and with the expensive mirth. <clears throat> so all this beforehand, thousands of years before, was prophesied by the, by the holy prophets. If we are reading the prophecies about this event that occurred in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, it was prophesied. The details that the prophets are giving us is like they lived in that time. They were witnessing what happened. They were in the crowd. But this happened thousands of years ago that they prophesied these things. They foretold these things to the Jewish nation. But the contemporary of Jesus, they were able to participate in this event. Their forefathers just heard the prophecies, but they were able to see with their own eyes, to witness his entrance. But let's go back to that dinner, because that dinner is very important. And it's important because there are many, many things that happen at that supper. So first of all, this woman that is preparing Jesus for his, for his burial, because this is what he said when Judas, this the Iscariot, the one that would betray him later, he was indignant. Why this lost? Like why we 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 could sell this mirth with three hundred denarii and give the money to the poor? Not because he was taking care of the poor, but because the money was in his pocket. So he used to steal from it because he was a thief. That's the reason. And because of his love for money, that was pretty much the reason that he betrayed his master and God. And unfortunately, in our days, how many of our Orthodox Christians are betraying even their own brothers, their own family, because of Mamona, because of the money. So, and we are seeing here in this picture two groups of people. One group, it was Jesus with his disciples and Lazarus, 
and the people that came to see him. And from the other side, we have Judas the Iscariot, who is looking for a chance to betray him and the Pharisees that came there for the same purpose. And now, with the, the supper, we remember Jesus saying that when you make bread or you offer a supper, dinner, do not invite your friends. Do not invite your family, but invite those that cannot offer you anything instead. Right, because if, if you will invite your neighbor, they will invite you back. They will make a dinner for you. Right, if you invite your family, they will do the same for you. Your friends, the same thing. But if you invite the poor, the ones that they cannot give you anything back, then the Lord will repay you for that. So that's the actual thing. So he's calling us to be merciful. To help and support those in need. And this is what is missing from this modern world. We have so much, and there are a lot of people that they have abundance, but unfortunately, we are not sharing what we have. Because we said this many times all we receive are gifts from God. It's not ours. And he gave them to us to share with those in need. So if we would do that, we wouldn't have homeless on the streets. We wouldn't have children dying every day, starving from hunger. <coughs> because we forgot our purpose on earth. We forgot that we are his image and likeness. And we forgot to imitate him. Because if each one of us would put first before him, if you are in a di difficult situation and you would think what Jesus would do, what the mother of God would do now, and pray and ask, help me, enlighten me, show me the way. Because he is the way. And if we would walk Towards him, we will always will be on the right path. So, and now, I want you to travel in this beautiful atmosphere, as you see, to travel spiritually back in time, 2,000 years ago. Let us try to walk along with Jesus in the city of Jerusalem. Let's enter with him now and imagine that atmosphere, that beauty, him riding the colt of a donkey, and all the people laying down their cloth, branches of palm trees, as we did in the church today. And some people following him, some others waiting for him at the entrance of the city of Jerusalem. Some others were rejoicing, others were questioning, who is this? And all of them rejoicing and chanting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the king of Israel. So, again, we have two groups here. The ones that understood the true message that he was giving to them, the true purpose of his incarnation and coming, and the other side that were waiting for a political leader, not for a spiritual leader, but for a political leader to get rid of the Romans to free them from the slavery of the Roman Empire 
but they misunderstood the message, the meaning that he came to free us from the slavery of our eternal enemy, from the Satan. That was his true purpose, to bring us eternal freedom and eternal peace. But unfortunately, they did not understand. And after 2,000 years, we are not far from them. We are not far from them. So, as we see again, not only at that supper, but here, again, we have two groups. Again, the people is divided. Again, one group that is following him and rejoicing with him, and another that is looking to put him to death. When he entered the, in the <coughs> temple, the Pharisees are asking him, don't you hear what they are saying? And he is answering them. Don't you know the, re the, the, re the readings? Don't you know what God said, the prophecies? That if they would stop, then the stones will cry out. So they have nothing to say in replace. But out of their ego, they put their plan in action. So they became God's killers. And so are we by sinning every day and departing from God. Because as I said, two groups in the house at the, uh, at the dinner t table, two groups there, two groups from the beginning of Christianity to our days. There is a group that are in the church following the commandments of, of the Lord, fasting and praying. And there is another group Unbelievers, atheists, idolaters that are against Christ, against his church, against his teaching. So you see nothing has changed in these 2,000 years. And they are the same enemies that were back then, the same enemies of Christ. And not only, but they today, and we are seeing this plainly. They are persecuting the church, persecuting the icons, persecuting the holy communion of Christ. Don't we see this? It's pretty obvious. They are the enemies of our Lord and Savior. So now in all this picture, where do we found ourselves? In which group we are? To which group do we belong? To the first one, the followers and worshipers of the Lord or the hatreds of the Lord. We have to make our choice, our decision to know where we are today. Because today we are tested. We are put, are put to test to see, to make our choice and our decision in which part we are, to which group we are belonging. And it is pretty clear for everyone and it's pretty obvious so let us open wide our spiritual eyes not only our physical the eyes, the, the eyes of our body but our spiritual as well to see it and to see the light and to follow the light because whoever walks in darkness will stumble and will tell we are the sons of light. We cannot worship the dark because the light conquered death, conquered darkness. And we shall walk only in the light and be sons and followers of the light. So this is what the Lord is inviting us by walking along with him in the city of Jerusalem and throughout the entire Holy Week, through his passion. 
So let's 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 put it in front of our soul, each one of us, because today our heart can become the city of Jerusalem. Let him invite, let, let us invite him to enter in our hearts as he entered the city of Jerusalem. To bring us the peace that he brought to those people. And let, not, let us make our choice and decision. Are we with those that were greeting him? Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Or we are with those that will, in few days, cry out, crucify him. Where we are founding ourselves today in, in our modern era, in our modern times. Who we are. Where we are belong. Where do, where do we belong. It's very important for each one of us to understand the message of this reading. And to understand who we are. And what is our goal? Where we are going? Where we're heading? Because our ultimate goal shall be our salvation. To unite our eternal soul with our eternal God. That's our ultimate goal. So everything else, yes, we are seeing all these things that are happening on a daily basis, calamities, the solution, we are seeing political anomaly, and so on and so forth. But from the other side, we are seeing miracles every day. We're seeing God's blessing every day. We are seeing his presence on a daily basis in our lives. So let us be the followers and the children of light and through the Holy Week along with our Lord to get to the mountain of Golgotha and to the resurrection and life eternal. Amen. God bless you all.